Okay, so I'm continuing on a previous video. I'm talking about about um, atmospheric rivers in Siberia, going in, going hitting the um, the cold air over the sea ice, going upwards, causing this um, warming of the of the uh, troposphere. And if it's forceful enough, it can cause warming and splitting, sudden stratospheric warming and splitting of the polar vortex. So this is just an advertisement plug. Not, well, go to Paul H. Beckwith and get, you know, find out how messed up weather is around the planet. I, I uh, you know, maybe uh, keep dosages of, of me and this stuff down so that you don't get uh, too affected by it. Um, you know, we don't want people getting depressed over this stuff, but you have to function, All right? So, um, also, please uh, consider supporting my work and analysis. I rely solely on donations at the moment because I don't have a contract to teach at the University of Ottawa or at Carleton. Um, and uh, you can go to paulbeckwith.net and I've got a PayPal button there. You don't need a credit, you don't need a PayPal account, just any credit card, you know, chip in five or 10 bucks, uh, you know, or you know support support this i try to i've got hundreds of videos i need to organize and catalog it a bit better i'm working on a book and other things but you know basically my income is sort of poverty level at the moment um because i'm not doing the teaching i just rely on the donations anyway i i want to continue right into the technical things i was discussing so a russian icebreaker sailed through um, this is the Laptev Sea, okay, right here. This is Alaska up here. This is uh, Russia and Obeya Zemla here. It's this region here we're talking about. It sailed from the open water to the ice margin, into the thin ice, into the thicker ice, went along, and it measured very, very, this was August 26 to September 1st, 2013. There was a sudden there was an atmospheric river developing. They timed it perfectly. I guess they, 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 they knew it was coming. And they saw this warming of the troposphere. The air is moving upwards. And it's very, very moist. Lots of water vapor. Okay, so here's what we see. Now this is uh, going up in the atmosphere here and in the ocean here. Um, what we see here is a map of the region. And you can see... Um, this is uh, kilograms. This is something called integrated uh, IVT, which is uh, integrated water vapor transport. Okay, so basically, these are this is more water vapor, less water vapor. We're getting this atmospheric river coming along here, carrying large amounts of water vapor up into this region. Okay, the sea ice border is. Uh, some I guess is it here so what we're seeing is this is the this is the water vapor coming in this is the temperature increase you know six to nine degrees Celsius in this whole region here of warming from this event okay so what happened to okay so this is some data some more measurements and, and uh, modeling showing what's going on here. So this is a map that we have here, okay? So what they saw was that air was coming in over the sea ice from two different regions. There was warm, humid air coming from over the land, off the land of Siberia, going over the open water, then going over the ice. Okay, this was a trajectory. This was a point where they sampled data. There was also another air passageway here from the Chukchi Sea that was lower. So this was all above 0.5 kilometers in height. This was below 0.5. And what you could see is the cold air near the surface of the, near the surface, just plowed right through that cold air dome of, that's over the sea ice because it's similar temperatures and went right in. Didn't change altitude. The warm air here, okay, so this was different paths that were taken. So there was a measurement of the warm air here. What would an air packet, 
a parcel of air due starting at 3.5 kilometers down here. It would come up, it would basically stay at about the same altitude. But if it was a kilometer high in this red line here, when it hit the dome over the, of cold air over the sea ice, it would be, have to rise up. It would uprise over the dome, as you can see here. Okay, and then it would bring the, the warmth. So here's the um, moisture again coming this way. This is uh, the average path of the air from coming over Siberia. At, uh, so that's higher than 0.5 kilometer. That's the red lines. And then this line here is the blue line. It's the lower, lower elevation Laptev air coming in. So this air just goes right through the dome. This air comes, hits a dome and rises up causing a warming of the troposphere. If the velocity was fast enough, okay, it could rise up and perhaps even, you know, reach the um, stratosphere where it would split the, interact with the polar vortex up there. Okay, this is just showing, um, this is showing like more data that they measured, you know, heating rates, and this is water vapor, you know, rates as a function of altitude. Um, and, uh, you know, similar sort of things here, okay? Um, I'm not going to talk about the details of every one. I want to get you, give you sort of a general picture of what's going on. Okay, so now, um, this is, uh, so here's some more data. It's showing, you can see, this is grams per kilogram. So this is the water vapor. Um, and you can see kind of the trajectory of this atmospheric river coming into the Arctic region. This is showing, you know, heights and latitude. It's the water vapor. So what, what will happen is as the water vapor goes in there, of course, and it's, it's going to be condensing into droplets. And because it's cold up there, it's going to be the, it's going to form the cloud. So this is sort of the cloud structure with latitude um, and this shows you um, this shows you sort of the heating the Kelvin degrees Kelvin or which is equivalent to Celsius in terms of the change like if you have a change of one Kelvin it's change of one Celsius uh, per hour okay so you can see here this is where the atmospheric river came in and caused a warming in this particular region Okay, so those are kind of trajectories or snapshot views of, of what happened. Okay, now this is interesting. Okay, now this set of images is similar to the one I showed you above, only this is from the model and this is the dry condition. So what they did is they assumed that there was no water vapor in the air coming from Siberia into the Arctic. It was dry. Okay, so therefore, there would be no latent heat being carried in. <clears throat> when that dry air hit the cold air dome over the ice, it would rise upwards because it's hot, but there would be no um, water vapor condensing, no heat released. Okay, so, um, so this, is, uh, this is modeling that. So now what happens is, this is the cold air coming in from the Laptev, uh, sorry, from the Chukki Sea, this is the Siberian air packets at different levels. And what you see is you see basically no change in the altitude. Okay, this air is well above. So, so the air that is forced upwards, it just, it just sort of rides over the dome. You know, there's a little bit of upward movement here as it rises over the dome, but there's no great spike upwards as we saw before. You know, remember up here, Okay, look at this sharp rise up here. This is because of the latent heat. Um, this is because of the water vapor that's in that air. Okay, so we don't see it here. You know, we don't see much change here. We don't see, and we just see an inversion here. You know, the air is colder at the surface, There's, but we don't see the patterns that we saw before. So you need moisture in the air for, for, for that to happen. Then what they did is they, um, let's go to the next diagram. So what did they do here? This is a no ice case. So the model had no ice covering the Arctic. Therefore, you wouldn't have a dome of cold air over the ice because there's no ice. 
This is the trajectory from Siberia and from the Chukchi Sea. And again, you can see, you don't see a rise, you know, especially these levels here, you don't see a rise. So you need the sea ice to do that. Um, and then there was another uh, sensitivity experiment that was done. Uh, where are we here? Um, okay, um, and this was showing there, there was less water vapor. Did I miss a set here? This is a no ice, figure six, figure seven. Um, yeah, so this was RH cut. Okay, so they basically lowered the amount of water vapor that was in the atmospheric river coming from over Siberia. And what happened was the air, you know, it just didn't have that effect. There wasn't a, a, a large warming in this region. There was basically, you know, this is the water vapor. There's some water in there, so you can see a faint outline, but, um, you know, things just weren't happening. You weren't getting this warming of the middle of the troposphere to any, anywhere near the extent that you did. Um, so you need the hot air, you need the water vapor, you need the ice there. Now what happened, um, okay, so now what happened is they looked, um, this is an interesting plot here, okay, so figure eight. Uh, where are we in the text? Uh, I can't find it, so I'll just talk about this. Okay, then what they did is they looked at all these sudden, they looked at all these uh, Siberian atmospheric rivers uh, over time. Okay, they looked over many years. They were finding they would happen about once a month sort of thing. But they're much warmer now than they used to be, and they have much, much more water vapor, and the ice is different. And they're also hitting in the winter, okay? So when the sea ice completely filled the basin, these things could only pick up water vapor over the land. It was like a continental climate, and they'd go into the Arctic, and the water vapor would be much, much lower because they're, they're, it's, the warm air is, is um, co cooling quickly. Um, it's got more water vapor than the cold air because it's able to, but it doesn't have a source of moisture because there's no open ocean. It's just picked up the moisture. If it's in the summer, it's picked up water vapor over the land in Siberia. Then it goes over the, you know, if the, if the sea ice is extensive, it won't pick up much moisture from the Arctic Ocean. If the sea ice is retreated a long distance from the coast and it picks up lots of moisture before it hits that cold dome over the ice and then rises up. So what this is showing is, this is showing um, a typical um, uh, re, you know, result similar to what they measured in 2013. Okay, you can see this here. This, uh, this is the atmospheric river coming up here. Okay, this is, la this is two days before it hits. This is when it hits. Okay, it's happening. And this is a few days later, two days later. Okay, so the effects, once it comes up, it, uh, the effects uh, can last days and days, and it changes the temperature of the atmosphere. You know, see, this is filling in here, and there's a, you know, a couple days later, it's really heated the atmosphere and had a big impact on the, on the um, middle troposphere. Okay, so, so basically, what can we conclude here? Um, right now, we're seeing temperatures you can, this is open. You can just Google this title and find this paper and read it and try to look at some of these diagrams. It's hard to explain all of this stuff in great detail, but I wanna tell you, you know, this is very, very significant um, information and it's not surprising. It's something that we, you know, we, we expect to see happen, but to actually have direct measurements from an icebreaker sending up radio sons to measure the uh, conditions up through the atmosphere over the open ocean, over at the sea ice boundary, over the thin ice, over the thicker ice, and to see this atmospheric river, this Siberian atmospheric river coming up, going up and actually heating up the, up to two, three, three, up, halfway up to the tropopause in the Arctic um, is very, very significant. Now in the winter, because the temperature contrast is larger, these winds, can move much faster and you can get a much faster shooting upward to into the polar vortex and splitting it causing all those feedbacks anyway thank you for listening